spray until something happens. These lights will never light up until I plug it into the power. So when you go to church and you hear the word, you hang around people that give you the right answers. When you plug it in, all of a sudden the light comes. You're like, oh my God. But you got to keep the switch of faith turned out. It's a push, but you got to push. You got to push to go to church. You got to push to read your Bible. You got to push to eat right. You got to push to think different than the world. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Give it up for Jesus today. So nice. Look at your neighbor. Sit down and look at him and say, you look so good. Tell him, say, even with the lights on, you look good. Welcoming all of our campuses today. We're starting a series this week called Push, Pray Until Something Happens. And so we're going to bring some real clarity because I, I love meeting people today. I met several people throughout walking through the crowd. And some people are just first time. Uh, one young girl just moved in from Arkansas, saw us on TikTok. Thank God for TikTok, right? So people are in different spaces and faces and, and, and phases of life. And so sometimes you can go to the church and think, well, God's not going to do anything for me and I don't want to ask anything because I've been bad. We're not talking about Santa Claus. Santa Claus, you know, he knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Come on, somebody. But Jesus, he knew that we were going to do bad, so he died for us to live this victorious life. But sometimes we got to push past insecurities, condemnation. And so today we're going to deal with the subject of healing. In fact, it was so fun last night when I did it, I decided that I'm going to do part two next week on healing. And so healing, the Bible says, is the children's bread. You're a child of God. Whether you feel like it or not, you're a child of God. Everybody shout, I'm a child of God. <laughs> I met a woman last night who came up to me, African-American woman, and she said, uh, oh my gosh, this brought so much life to me because I have brain cancer. And can you imagine, I mean, is there anything really worse than brain cancer? It's really big. How many of y'all would, would vote and say that's really kind of a big deal? So the, the sermon really helped her because she could see light at the end of the tunnel. She thought that perhaps maybe God would heal her by the end of the service. She knew God was going to heal her. But the only thing that's really worse than brain cancer is cancer on the mind. So no matter where the cancer is at, it can be, you know, throat cancer. It can be, you, you name it, and it's cancer on the mind. Because the devil tries to do the same thing to all of us. He'll let you know your own death sentence. He'll start telling you what's going to happen. Anybody ever had like bad gas, but you Googled it and you wet, web and beat it. And you're like, my God, I'm dying of pancreatic cancer. Come on, raise your hand, right? The worst thing you can do is Google it, right? So the enemy does that. So he starts diagnosing to you what's going to happen to you. But what we have to do is push past that and get more faith in God's ability to heal us. And once you believe that you receive, when you pray, it begins to activate the miraculous in your life. Even doctors who are not believers, don't know Jesus, say they have studied the people who pray while they're going through chemo or pray while they're getting surgery. And these people fare better, heal quicker, and have a more incredible outcome. Because guess what? They're praying to God. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven there's no cancer, there's no sickness. And God says, I want you to have it on earth. How do you do that? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today, because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So this first scripture that I really want to go to, it's really cool, and I think you're really going to get a kick out of it. In, in Luke 8, 43, it's in the Amplified Bible, it says that a woman had suffered from a hemorrhage. She'd been bleeding for 12 years, spent all of her money on physicians, and couldn't be healed by anyone. And she came up behind him, Jesus, touched the fringe of his outer garment, and immediately, everybody shout immediately, <clears throat> immediately her bleeding stopped. Now, number one, I want to talk about the word immediate for a second. There's a difference between a miracle. Anybody ever needed a miracle? There's a difference between a miracle. It's like, wow, that was a miracle. Like your kid cleaned his room, took out the trash, put a bag back in. That's a miracle, right? Your husband put down the toilet lid. Come on, somebody. It's like, what a miracle! So there's a miracle that's denoting an instantaneous, wow, bam, and God does those severally as he will. But if you read the scripture in the Bible, listen, Florida, it said the just shall live by faith. Remember this? You know, it, it, it says that. It says the just shall live by faith. It doesn't say the just shall live by miracles. Because you never want a miracle. Thank God God could give you a miracle. But you never want a miracle healing of cancer because you don't want cancer. So the best thing that we can do is say, you know what, we don't want to live by miracles, but God has the ability to do that if necessary. And he actually has already done everything he's going to do about healing you 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, how many of y'all believe in Jesus? Raise your hand, believe in Jesus. 
And we just were in a bunch of Muslim countries, and you could feel the oppression there. Like, don't even say anything about Jesus. You could just feel the opposition last week when we were there. But Jesus wasn't, he's not a fictional, uh, historical, made up. No, no, no. This is a real person who is a person of the Godhead who bled and died for our sins 2,000 years ago and already settled the debt. It is paid. Now we just have to receive it immediately. Am I explaining it to you clear enough? Are you getting it? Because I, I want to make sure. Some of you are new to this, and I want to make sure we get it. Now, in verse 45, Jesus said, hey, who touched me? Peter said, how in the world? Are, Pete, there's crowds everywhere. And pushing against you. I love it. Our series is push. Pushing against you. There was this woman who, who said, I'm going to push past the crowd, and I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. And, and Jesus said, hey, somebody touched me in faith. Uh, power came out of me. The word there is dunamis, where we get the word dynamite. And, and, and I, I, I can't escape the fact that when, when somebody touched me, thousands of people touched me, but somebody touched me, and they believed, I'm going to be healed when I pray. Now, uh, this is a little misleading when, when our team came up with this, I'm like, I like it. Pray until something happens. But what I don't want you to do is misunderstand and think, I got to keep praying and keep praying and keep praying. So I think the best way to illustrate this is Amazon. Anybody ever ordered anything on Amazon? Okay, so my wife, she is Amazon, not only Amazon, she's Amazon Prime. When she found out there was Amazon now, it was like on like Donkey Kong. In fact, when we moved, she wanted to make sure there was an Amazon warehouse close enough to her house to get her crap on the same day. <laughs> She's got an app on her phone. And so when we were on vacation, she has a little mirror. And it's this, this mirror because she travels a lot. And uh, she has a little like, like mirror with batteries. And you put it up there. But sometimes if you're not careful, you see the mirror. And you're leaving the hotel and you forget the mirror. So she leaves the mirror in like Greece. And we're in Turkey. And she says, oh, no, I forgot my mirror. Which, guys, you don't know anything about this. But this is a big deal for women. Come on, raise your hands. We're like, oh, that girl's so pretty. That just, and when they say, I just woke up like this. That is a lie from the pit of hell. No woman ever woke up like that. There is a mirror somewhere, somebody. And there's eyelashes and hair extensions and girdles and a wiggle. You're like, whoa, who's, who's that lady? Well, this lady needs a mirror. So she's depressed about the mirror the whole time. But as soon as we landed, man, in St. Louis, she just got on Amazon Prime. And then like two hours later, I'm walking out on the porch and there's the, the package. I'm like, how in the world can this make-believe guy from Amazon get it quicker than I can get it? And I go, hey, your mirror's here. Look. And she goes, I know. So when she ordered the mirror, get this, it's just like prayer. When she ordered the mirror... She didn't go, oh, God, I hope it comes. Oh, I don't deserve it. Oh, I know I've messed up my first mirror. But, oh, God, if there's any way, could you bring my mirror to me? Oh, I bet I'll never get a mirror again. No, she just hit Amazon Prime. She believed she received. And then when it got there, I went, here's your mirror. And she's like, yeah, you moron, I ordered it two hours ago. <laughs> so when I say pray until something happens, that's not what we do. Like, oh, God, heal me of cancer. Oh, God. No, we pray, God, I believe in the name of Jesus that you healed me and I receive it right now. And I believe the manifestation, somebody ought to shout amen, is on its way. I might not feel it. Oh, yeah, but I'm going to keep the switch of faith turned on because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Psalms 107.20, it says he sent his word and it healed them. And I love this part. It says it delivered them from all, A-double-L, all their destruction. So cancer is a destructive force. Arthritis is a destructive force. But the enemy is always trying to get us to not push or to think, hey, you know what? God did heal me one time, but I lost it. This is where a lot of people mess up. They get healed. And so what happens is healing, healing denotes time. You start, I have so much I want to tell you guys, and I got 21 minutes and 24 seconds, so please listen quickly. No more jacking around about fake eyelashes and weaves and all that stuff. <sighs> the Bible says faith comes by hearing. So have you ever watched like a commercial or watched a movie, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I think I do have fibromyalgia, tick a lock a lock a baka daka daka dika daka I think I have that. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. And so our television is always putting stuff on us. You're like, do you have trouble sleeping at night? Do you toss and turn? Do you get up multiple times to go to the bathroom? Yeah, we'll take our little pill. And then at the last it says, you might wake up with a bleeding ulcer and wet to bed anyway, but it's okay. <laughs> Anybody watch these commercials? And as you get older, you watch the news. And the news is never like, hey, go to Six Flags, have a good time. It's for old people. It's like, is your back out? Yeah, is your knee out? Yeah. 
And so faith comes by hearing. So the more you hear negative stuff, the more your body and your brain triggers it. Go back and watch our brain series because there's this articular activator in your brain that once you, have you ever bought a car and then you saw the car everywhere? You bought the dress and then everybody had the dress? Raise your hand. No, there's no more cars like that or dresses like that. It's a, it stirred something in your brain and now your brain started noticing that. So as you get older, you're like, oh, you start making stupid statements. Like, I, you know, my back goes out more than I do. <laughs> I got old timer's disease, you know, just forget everything. No, the Bible says the memory of the righteous is blessed. So your brain and your spirit start working towards and pulling that which is called of God on your life, which is healing. And so all the things of the world is saying, hey, what? Well, take this pill and alleviate it. The word says, take this pill and eradicate it. I tell you right now that these sermons will change your life forever because you won't act the same, you won't think the same, because Jesus came too far and paid too much for you to live in sickness and disease. You are not normal. You are abnormal. I'm going to shout it again. There's nothing normal about you. You're abnormally blessed, abnormally good looking. you got an abnormally cool preacher. Someone go with me on this right now. This is your life. But faith comes by hearing, okay? So this woman, she said, hey, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. So they brought this up for me, and they said, this one here, it's, it's dummy proof, PD. The green one is the one with the power. This has no power. This has power. But these lights will never light up until I plug it into the power. So when you go to church and you hear the word, you hang around people that give you the right answers. When you plug it in... All of a sudden, the light comes on. She's like, oh, my gosh. How many of y'all feel like something definitely changed? The light came on. You're like, oh, yeah. But then we go to work on Monday, and we unplug it, and the light goes off. So the key is, that's why church is so important. At least one day a week, you need to go and say, I'm going to keep the switch of faith turned on. And like the woman with the issue of blood, I've got issues. Raise your hand if I got issues. You got them too, right? So you got issues. And so you come and you hear the word and then you plug it in and all of a sudden the light comes on and now you're in an abnormal world, but there's something different about you. People wonder what is different about you. And so when they're saying, I'm an old timer. Oh, I'm just old. I got to get some ha a house with no steps because I'm getting older. It's like, how old are you? I'm 24. Shut up. Shut up! Okay, so when we hear the word and we go to the right church and we get in a group and we start doing this, all of a sudden the sickness and disease that comes and the devil comes, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So when he comes and tells you you're going to get this and you're going to die early, he says, I'm 54 and I know what you think. You know, my gosh, you don't look a day over 53. Thank you. So 54, 55, 56, two years from now, my dad, he died at St. Anthony's Hospital just up the road of cancer. My grandfather died early. My grandmother died early. Everybody in my family died early. So what I decided to do, my lightning fast mind, I thought I'm going to plug myself up into people that know what they're doing about health and nutrition. So I started studying about vitamins and, and I started studying about, uh, you know, fasting. And I started studying about all the things that my family suffered from because when you go to the doctor and say, does your family suffer from this? Anybody ever fill that thing out? You know, hypertension, ugly, all the stuff, you know, yeah. Got all that? Okay. So, so when we were filling that out, we say, hey, wait a minute. That's what our natural family has. But when Jesus died on the cross, that tree, 2,000 years ago, our family tree forked. And when it forked, you now get healing, blessing, favor, and breakthrough. So I'm not doing the math on my grandpa. Come on. I'm not doing the math on my dad's genes. I'm doing my math saying Jesus' blood has healed me, filled me. I'm not going to eat what they ate. I'm not going to drink what they drank. And I'm not going to think what they think. Because I want to live so long. My friends in heaven think I knew he was going to hell. I knew it. I knew he wasn't coming. With long life, the Bible says, he'll satisfy you and show you your salvation. Raise your hand if you're understanding what I'm saying. Raise your hand if you're like, no, I need a little more clarity. Raise your hand. I want to see you here. We'll get a little class for you by yourself. Yeah. The more you hear this, the more this will become normal for you. So the woman pushed. Everybody shout, she pushed. I'm going to turn this off so it's a little more comfortable for you. There's another scripture, Matthew 15. It's about a Canaanite woman. I know I'm giving you a lot of Bible. This will help you. It said, Jesus left the place and he went away to the district of Thyre and Sidon. And uh, just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out shouting or came out pushing. Everybody shout, she came out pushing. 
She said, have mercy on me, O son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. Jesus did it. And all his disciples came and urged him, saying, send her away. She keeps shouting. She keeps shouting. I'm just telling you there's something about just keep shouting. Just keep pushing. So Nicole, she came home about 20 years ago, and she had cancer. And they said that you got stage 4 cancer, and you'll never be able to have a child. So now we have a 19-year-old. Trust me, we've got her, and we have all the Amex bills to prove we've got her. So the enemy told her you got cancer, and it was, it was factual. Factual she had cancer. But truth supersedes fact. Jesus said he is the spirit of truth. And the Bible said the truth shall set you free. So when she came home, immediately the devil, who is a liar, first of all, this is a good trick for you. Whatever the devil says is a lie, so you can reverse it. So if he says you're going broke, you're going to be fine. If he says you're going to die early, start saving your money because you're going to live a long time. Okay, so the devil's lying to her, and he's picturing to her, you're going to die early. You're never going to have a kid. You finally meet, this is my version, you meet the man of your dreams. It's unbelievable. You would love to reproduce with such an incredible specimen. Come on, go with me on this right now. And she's, she's, she's hearing all these things. And then I was telling her, hey, here's, I, I'm hearing the same thing, but because my father had raised me different, I was full of the word. And then her parents had took her to VBS and she was full of the word. So when the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy, it, it was a fight. It was a push. And there was days when you felt like, oh, it's not going to work. And you say, no, you shut up. In the name of Jesus, we're going to get ourselves plugged back into the right movies, the right music, and we're going to shine the light of the word of God on this. And guess what? Within a year, she was totally healed, pregnant with Ashton. Somebody ought to give God praise today. And 20 years later, cancer-free. I decree and declare that it will happen for you, but you got to keep the switch of faith turned out. It's a push, but you got to push. You got to push to go to church. You got to push to read your Bible. You got to push to eat right. You got to push to think different than the world. I'll give you 10 seconds of praise. Nine, eight, come on, seven. The devil's just a jerk. You got to rebuke him. Some people say, well, I'm in no condition to rebuke the devil. The devil, well, first of all, how many of y'all believe there is a devil? You didn't raise your hand. You, he's convinced you he's not real. And if I was the devil, I would convince you that I wasn't real as well. The devil is real, and he's the one that puts sickness and disease on you. And he's the one who says to you at Weldon or Ferguson, you don't need to go to church. Because he wants to get you unplugged. Because if he gets you unplugged, the light's dim. The entrance of his word brings light. And so when the devil comes, and he will, and he'll try to steal the information even in saying, oh man, that's just, that's a preacher trying to get your hopes up. Well, if it was just a preacher trying to get your hopes up, how I many, if you were going to die tomorrow, you would rather nobody tell you you're going to die tomorrow, just shoot me tomorrow and don't tell me because I don't want to try to sleep tonight knowing I'm going to die tomorrow. Raise your hand, I want to see the intelligent people in the room. So hope is good. The Bible said hope is the anchor of the soul. Hope activates your mind and your hopes and your wills and emotion. In fact, there's people that lived through horrible situations, but they didn't know they were sick. And because nobody told them they were sick, somehow through their mind and through the help of God, they got better. Sometimes what we need to do is make sure that we're being an authority or strong enough with the devil. Now, I'm going to get loud for a minute. This last week, I, we were in Turkey, and there, was some, there was a couple of situations that were a little sketchy. And one guy had grabbed Nicole, and she, he was kind of pulling her, and she looked at me, and he was kind of, I thought he was friendly, but not friendly, and there was a camel involved, and there's tourists and different stuff, and so she looks at me, and she goes, I don't want to go. She looked at me, and I said, David, I don't want to go. So then I knew we got a problem, so I said, hey, let her go. He let her go. If I would have said, well, you could probably take my wife, and I think I remember the Liam Neeson movie to see if I can find her or track her on the phone. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Hey, she wants a mirror. She forgot her mirror. She's going to need Amazon. No. 
You watch a mom think that her kid has been taken at Walmart. Shut the doors! This is your life. you got to plug yourself into the Word and say, you know what, devil? You come at me, but I'm coming at you with the spear and the sword. I'm hooking myself up to the Word of God, and I'm decreeing and declaring right now, devil, today is the day you're not going to be welcome in my house anymore. Open the door, kick him out, say, hit the road, Jack. Don't come back. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. With long life, he'll satisfy me and show me his salvation. He sent his Word, and it healed them. Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes, I am healed. I don't have to get healed. Jesus got it for me. Come on, Weldon. Come on, Ferguson. Come on, 10 seconds. Make some noise. Give it praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it making sense to anybody? Oh, yeah. Luke 13. Luke. Verse 10. And Jesus was teaching. That's good. I mean, that's what we're doing today. We're teaching. That's why you come to church, you get taught, learn something. So if Jesus was teaching, then we need to teach. On the Sabbath day, so he went to church. Behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. It's a long time. She was bowed over and could no wise, I love this point, lift herself up. Sometimes we think we can lift ourselves up. I can do this on my own. I'm going to pull myself up by my bootstraps. I can do it. It's mind over matter. Well, you got to have a mind for it to matter. And if you're losing your mind, you probably can't pull yourself up by yourself. And that's why I like you getting groups. It starts in September. It's a big church. You need to get in groups because you need to be around people. And it, I, we, last night we ate at uh, Brio, I think it is, and, uh, and I don't know where we were, Clayton or something. And, and this, this girl, she comes over and she's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe it's you guys. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe it's you. I go to your church. I just said, were you waiting on us? She said, no. I said, you need to trade because we're big tippers. <laughs> so she came back and said, I got your table. She was so nervous. She's kind of spilling the bread. She was doing everything. She said, oh, my gosh, she's nervous. And then she's waiting with us. And then all of a sudden, another, I, I came out and this white girl grabs me. She works here. She said, oh, my goodness. She said, I can't believe you're here. She said, I got saved three months ago, started going to Earth City. It just changed my life. Then an African-American guy that works there, he comes over and says, oh, he said, I, I serve at the Ferguson campus. And then the black girl goes, oh, I actually work in the portico at the Ferguson campus. And my point was is that they all knew each other. Community matters. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You hang around a lot of people and they say, well, you know, we're just getting old, Ed. You're 50. Don't tell me you're, I'm getting old. I'll push up. I'll get like guys that work, they're 20, and I'll be like, let's have a little push-up competition, and let's see who's old. I'm not bragging. I'm just reporting that you're as old as you think you are, and you're built to last. Joshua and Caleb were 120. Come on, Abraham and Sarah had a baby. Come on, almost 100 years old. Bow chicka wow wow. There was no Viagra commercials. This were full of a word. I'm telling you, if you come to this church, be careful as you get older. If you don't want a bigger family, use protection. Somebody ought to help me right now because the word of God will get you alive. Some of y'all looking at me like, I don't know. I don't, leave, I don't know how much I want of the word. I don't want to be that active. I finally got Bob to leave me alone. Shave your legs, Margaret. We're heading out. Put your mirror on. Get your wig on. Get your weave on. Stella, get your groove back. Somebody ought to help me right now. You're too young to feel this old. Faith Church believes in not only healing, we believe in divine health. I got six minutes and 20 seconds, so please quit. Quit bringing all this stupidity out of me. <laughs> Verse 13, it says, and as he laid his hands on her, immediately, that's a miracle, she was made straight. And I love this part. I underlined it for you. She glorified God. Sickness and disease glorifies the devil. Healing and blessing and health glorifies God. Do you want to glorify God or do you want to glorify the devil? See, I, I, I'm even intentional with my hands. God and the devil. Everything I'm doing right now, I'm using my body and my mind and my words to try to teach you that what you've been taught by the world, what you've been taught 
by the Federal Food and Drug Administration. From your cholesterol levels to what you eat, to fake meat, don't eat fake meat. Stop drinking 24, 36, and 97 ounces of soda. You need water. 70% of the world is water. 70% of your body is Diet Coke and coffee. And 9% is water. So help God help you. You wouldn't go to the gas station today and go, you know, water is actually cheaper than gas. So let's put water bottles in the gas tank because the car does not operate by water. Automobiles operate by gas unless they're electric. And then you have to plug them in. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. And God wants you to help him by hearing the word and not only watch what comes out of your mouth. I won't be here long with this, but i got to go here for a minute. But you got to watch what goes in your mouth. If you eat what everybody else eats, you'll feel like everybody else feels. You can tell you hate this part, but it won't be long. But I have to go here. For this next week, I'm going to ask you at all campuses to do this. You don't have to participate. But I want you to see if it makes a difference. I'll put it actually on my TikTok and Instagram, what I do in the morning. I'll, I'll do it tonight before I go to bed. But the one thing I want you to start doing is I want you to get up every day. And I want you to drink. Before you drink coffee, and I want you to drink your coffee. But I want you to drink 8 to 16 ounces of water. And there's, I put some lemon in it and some stuff, and I'll, I'll talk about that on Instagram. But drink that first, and because all night long you were laying in bed going, <laughs> come on, raise your hand. If you weren't doing it, the person next to you was doing it. <laughs> Snoring sounds like, I am sleeping, you are not. <laughs> right? And so if we drink that water in the morning, all of a sudden our body begins to come alive. And then on your phone, if you got an iPhone, raise your hand if you got an iPhone. If you have an Android, raise your hand. We're going to pray for you right now. God, we pray. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it. Yes, I did. Okay, so your iPhone has on it a step counter, right? So here it is. It says, so far today, I've, I've done 685 steps because I kind of walked from the house to the car. But before I go to bed today, I have to have 10,000 steps, which means i got to have my conversations on. That's the reason why I preach with the phone in my pocket. And if I don't get 10,000 steps, I'm tying this to Nicole's dog and I'll let it run around the house. It's like, but just from now till next Sunday, I want you to get up and drink water first, then drink your coffee. And then before you go to bed, I want you to get 10,000 steps. You're like, oh, my knees are, are bad. My, my weight's bad. You just, it doesn't have to be fast. You can walk slow. But get 10,000 steps in. And then I want you to start saying positive affirmations and make them up on your own. Okay, Weldon, Ferguson, it doesn't matter what it is. But say things that good about you. Instead of, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm old. Then your body's like, I'm fat, I retain water, I'm ugly, I'm old. When you're around champions, you produce champions. And you're a champion. So like I was sitting here watching Jim Edmund's son. He's an incredible, in, in and of himself, an incredible athlete, right? He's killing it. But he actually lives in the house with Jim Edmund. So all the Cardinals players are at his house. He has batting cages at his house. He has a bowling alley at his house. He's got a pool at his house. And his dad's Jim Flippin' Edmonds. I mean, he's got to know how to play some ball. But he's been raised by a champion. I'm telling you, when you're raised in the house of God, God's looking at you going, you know what? I'm expecting more out of you. I'm expecting you to use your life to change somebody else's life. Girls in sex trafficking are counting on you. People in third world countries are counting on you. People in Hawaii with their houses burning down and our sister churches, we already sent money there. We were already on the ground before the government was on the ground. Give God praise today. That's why you need to be healthy. That's why you need to be wise. You're a champion. We are the champions. Okay, 16. Then it says, verse 16, important verse. I'll leave it alone after this. It says, ought not this woman, this is what Jesus said, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan, who bound her? Come on, every campus. What, who bound her? Satan. Satan bound her these 18 years. Be loosed. 18 years and she's loosed. Because she got to Jesus and she got hooked up to the power source. And now the power comes on. And after 18 years, the light is on. And Jesus said, should not this woman, this daughter of Abraham, shall I say to you, should not this man or woman, a faith church member, be free from this thing that has kept them so long, they think I'll always have to have the addiction. I'll always be on the medicine. I decree and declare over your life that light has come today. And if you'll put this word in your heart and you come back next Sunday and you hear it again, you'll have to introduce yourself to yourself in a year because you're not going to look the same. You're not going to think the same. You're not going to act the same. 
saying? Because greater is he that is in you, come on somebody, than he that is in the world. Give God a great big hand of praise today. Amen. Now, before we go, raise your right hand if you got something good out of the sermon. Raise your left hand if you feel like the person next to you, they're catching on. Okay, so I want you to say these things about yourself. Make up your own affirmations. We're going we're gonna to get up in the morning. We're going to drink the water. I'll put it on my Instagram so you can see what I do in the morning. Then you're going to get those 10,000 steps, and then you're going to start saying stuff about you that's true. Here's some. I'm blessed. I'm favored. Nicole always says, you, I, I'm going to look, act, and feel 20 years younger than I am. All the time. Almost every day. She'll say something about her grandson, and people come up to her and go, excuse me, you have a grandson? She's like, I got a 32-year-old son. They go, I thought you were 32. Because what's happening is the Bible says, you beautify the meek with salvation. So, number one, we know she's got a mirror that helps her do things. (laughs) No, that's number four. Number one is she gets up and she puts her word on. She's always listening to podcasts. She's always coming to church. She's always worshiping Jesus. And this will make a difference in your whole life. You want to look good? You want to feel good? You want to live a long time? It's one thing to live a long time, but it's another thing to have a quality of life that you feel good and look good and you want to go do fun stuff with your kids and your grandkids. Listen, there's no better life than the life with Jesus. Can I get an amen on that? There's no better life than a life full of word. I want you to stand with me today at Ferguson and Florissant, Florida, everybody everywhere. And I, I, I want to ask you a couple questions. Number one, would you be interested in next week with me talking more about this, but also even maybe bringing a few things up that I take in supplements, not to sell anything to you, you can buy it anywhere, but you'd be interested in the things that I do or things that I take with me. I mean, there's peptides that I take. There's a, a doctor was at my house this morning. I, I blew out, what was it, my ACL, uh, no, my meniscus. And so, I don't know what all this stuff is, but my meniscus. And so, instead of going to the doctor and getting a cortisol, a cortisol shot, which will damage you, uh, I come in and, and, and they put a little needle in there this morning. And I can't think right now. Stem cells. And so, stem cells. And so, put stem cells in there. My shoulder messed up. Got a stem cell. Every, all my friends needed surgery. I don't do that. I first go the word way and the way that God created plants and herbs and nutrition and drinking loads of water. And I want to I wanna look and feel younger every year and you can do it too can I pray for you if you're interested make sure next week you don't miss it I'm going to bring some things up on stage that will help you grow Father I pray right now for every man every woman every boy and every girl Jesus that you would get glory in their life and God they have such a heart for you I know they have a heart for you because they came to church today and God there's things that they need to do with their life and there's people that they need to affect There's a lot of people that we need to bring to church even next week that are suffering and getting out of the hospital or getting ready to go to surgery, and they need to hear this. And friends don't let friends go through hell alone. We go and we bring those people to church. We invite them to the campuses that they might be healed. And Father, now that they have a heart towards you, and we know that you don't heal them because they're good, you heal them because you're good, I just decree and declare that healing is coming to their body this week. They're going to see an increased manifestation as they speak good words, as they apply these prayers of faith over their life. We speak healing over them, and I even hear it by the Holy Spirit over your loved ones. Let's pray for loved ones right now. God, we have loved ones that are sick, children that have diseases, and elderly parents that are struggling. And God, we thank you that healing is the children's bread. There's no distance in prayer. And Father, we speak this over their life. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. Was that all right for today? Give the Lord.